So today, I am back with a new video. I apologise for no video last week. I've been having some technical issues. And I think I'm getting my head around it now. Literally, I've swapped audio recording software. I was usually using a basic software. I'm now going to a bit more complex, a bit more umph to it. And I'm drowning in this change and options. So, as always, I am still doing the giveaway for 100 subscribers. I hope people are enjoying the content and hope people will enjoy what I'm giving away, which is a D&D rulebook. So, let's get back into the videos. Last week, I started the Earthdorm uh, series, and this is going to be back to the Kingdom of Fife series. So, let's begin. Ban Jovi was alone. He had survivors from the camp. But as a hero, warrior, and general good guy, he was alone. He knew he couldn't count on his survivors. He was chained up, beaten, tortured, starved for weeks. Only he was in full fighting force. So he left them back. Let them eat and rest of the food he left them. And he himself went on his own to the town. Town displaying the banners and symbols of the Zargoth backs. He knew he was not going to have a good time. So he went around seeing banners and wanted posters of his face. So he covered himself up, knowing he was signing like, out like a sort of form. He eventually reached a small town hall where he had a good guess where the boss was going to be. And he was right. Standing in front of them was a few horses and an undead unicorn. And Juvie was panicking. But he was cool as a cucumber on the exterior. He did not want to go in this alone. But he didn't have much choice. He needed to make sure the town was safe before the others got here. Not so. You can't be a bard and not have an epic moment to write by yourself. So he went in, shouting, screaming, saying, in, Hey, are you all cowards? This bard and Zargapax here. Shout. Because this town, as I knew it, would never surrender. Two men came up to him, wearing black armour. And on the tilting shield was the logo of Zargfax. They grabbed him, picked him up, off his feet, and dragged him into the office. In front of him was a man wearing the same black armour. Helmet down. And a white little plume of hair from the helmet. He removed his helmet to see a very pretty face. Soft features. Very fae-like. Quite, not quite Elven, but like, well then, this is Legendary Ban Jovi. I was not expecting to see you here. Where's the rest of you? Or have you finally given up on them and went back to the bard road and back to the bard lifestyle? And Ban Jovi sat there in quiet, contemplating what to do next. Because he was currently surrounded on his own. For one, he shouted and screamed, and gave off their profanities, in the great language of Gnomish. But Ban Jovi, why didn't you fight for us? We can give you more power, more magic, and greater stories to sing about. You could sing about the rule of Zargafax, and how he is such a benevolent leader. Ban Jovi just looked and, and denied. Like, no, no, no. I know he's done. I was there, Dundee. But have you seen the food? The wealth he's been distributing. Every town is no longer going hungry. You could be a leader in this positive change he is bringing to the country. And Banjovi had it. He was not the thing anymore. And he cast Fireball, the high level, on himself. Incinerating the guards to his left and right. The room ablaze. And his pet snake, he looked after all his life, Brian Adder, perished in the fireball. 
And it only left a scorch on the unicorn rider in front of him. He passed out from the damage he had sustained. He woke up unconscious in a cage. Some time passes. He doesn't know how long. And he's being tormented by one of the guards who sat there watching. And it's like, you could, you're you such a big wimp out there, Bon Jovi shouted. I can take you. I can fight you. It's channeling in his inner gnome. The inner pent-up aggression that this world has given to him. And the guard just didn't budge. He did not listen until he started using ambitious mockery. And then the guard listened. He came in, kept the handcuff of some Bon Jovi, and wailed on him. Point where he was unconscious again. More time passed. Van Jovi was on the verge of bleeding out from his wounds. He wakes up to notice he's in another cell now. To his left is someone he wasn't too sure. And another one to his right, who's not too sure, but he could recognize the face. It was familiar, he just couldn't place it. And then it was also a very Tall dwarf. The tallest, tallest, tallest of dwarfs he ever seen. Standing at a whole six foot, which dwarfs all the dwarfs. Like, and Julie tried to make friends straight away. It's like, he got names. He found out the dwarf was the king of the dwarfs. He got locked here waiting for ex execution. He was bringing a message with his personal guards. They got attacked. His personal guard died, and he was the only one to survive. Also here was... Angus McFive Jr. The second of his name. So Van Jovi used his inner ability of making friends. Eventually, he got them all to his side, and realised... If they were going to fight and get out of here and not be executed, they have to work together. Now let's turn away from Banjo of the Town being and go back to the other group. A few hours earlier, the other group had their feast, had breakfast, and they knew the, um, they could not deny the King Godling's support of food, as this was an insult and you could not insult the King Godling. They had their meals and then set off for the town. They arrived a bit later, probably the same time Van Jove was being tortured the first time, before he got moved to the next cell. They saw what was going off and they saw that there was a basic checkpoint now, and you have to be checked over. Keelan reluctantly used presentation, a spell I can never pronounce, and never were able to pronounce, change her robes, and change the symbols on Vanadar, making her more look like a knight of Zargafax. Currently, Penum's character was not here for this session, if I remember correctly. So, Penum was just doing Penum things, you know? He was talking along, saying, T is bad. Let's say friends. And I'm being mean to Penum. Penum's a good character. I should not be being that mean. But they got to the guards, and the guards were just playing cards. They didn't really give a fuck. You know, they just, like, yeah, pass through. And Vanda had to play the part. She was being a high-ranking officer, and she uh, insulted all of them for their callousness, the laziness, and those not taking their job seriously. And this is going to report them to the other authorities. And kind of did, you know. She, as she just walked off their services and then out of sight, out of hearing, she returned back to normal. So they was going through the town. The town was a bit different. There was more food. There was more trade going off before. As Zargvax's forces, even though they was evil and vile, 
things I was doing, the monstrosities I was acting upon. They at least brought some order to the land so people could trade and people could bring goods to each town. Sometimes dictatorships, even though they are horrible things, do bring some sense of order. That's what Vandor and Kian understood. We knew the freedom would have to be brought to them. Nobody wanted to support the artifacts in this town, and they will help. The man came up to Kaelin and did a very bad job of pickpocketing. He made it clear that he was putting something in her pocket and walked off, and got away before they even realised what was put there. There was a small note saying, Be careful who you trust. Not all that seems to be true is true. Maybe a poster amongst the ranks. Meet me at the bar. I can talk more. They headline straight to the bar, hoping to see what this mysterious note was. When they got there, the bar was empty. Just one man. It was clearly the barkeep. They hadn't expected you. This town has fallen. The guards betrayed the town and threw the captain into the cells. But be careful who you trust. I think we are spies amongst us. So, what happened? Well, like I said, the Sarkvax forces came and people saw an opportunity to turn the guard and others were too lazy to fight. And those who did not want to uh, be on the Zogpack's name died. Sad, it really is sad, but fortunately that's what happened. Now they are going to execute your friends. Friends? Yeah, friends, sure. You know, people you can save. Like, I say friends. Um, I wouldn't know those friends. It was Ban Jovi. Like, well. If you could save all of them, might even better then. Like, who are these people? We only... Okay, never mind, don't worry about it. So we went out to the... hall where the... the people were being held. There was a magnificent, magnificent noose set up. Ready to hang all of them. They should have thought of this and went straight into... Down hall. You know, with the guys are still up, they managed to convince the secretary to let them in. Because that can happen. Straight down. I mean, if you play the right way and play your cards right, you don't fuck up, you can get stuff done. So Vandal pretended to be a higher up still, you know. She said, I, said, I want to torture some civilians. I want to punish those who betrayed us, and who fought against us. And the secretary said, yes! Fuck yes, let's do this. Let's hurt some people. So she, the secretary was so excited to hurt people, and kind of had a spring in his step at the fort. And as they got to the jail cell, where Batman Jovi and friends were, the uh -oh. fight was already moving, stabbing the neck of the secretary and snapping it from his face. Dubbing him before he fell to the floor, dragged him back into the cell and picked up his sword. So, are we getting out of here? The party just looked it's like, who's he? It's like, imagine if he casually mentioned, oh, that's my new friend. Hank McFive Jr., the future king of five. The party has found the future here. And this is what I'm going to call for today, this week's episode. I hope people have fun and people enjoyed the episode. And I do apologize if the audio is not up to normal standard. I do not know why it's being funny. I can't get it back to the normal quality it used to be at. And this, I do apologize. I am trying to sort it out. And if I can't, I will have to figure a new solution. For now, this has been Daniel, as always. Hope you enjoyed the content. And hope that, you know, you get into D&D. &D, you know, and hope you appreciate and enjoy the game. As always, hope your sessions are long and your crits are plenty. I'll see you next week.